Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to feature 10 tips to hi-fi heaven. And what I mean by that is I've been building systems as a hobbyist uh, for 35 years. I've made tons of mistakes. And in today's world, today's economy, today's prices, uh, not everyone can afford to make these mistakes. So I'm gonna give you these 10 tips so maybe you don't make the same mistakes that I have over the years. And hopefully by the end of these tips, you'll be able to go out and build the system of your dreams. We're gonna do 10, they're not in any particular order, and we're gonna go from one to 10 instead of 10 to one. So let's get started right with number one. So number one, what is your goal? You have to have a goal in mind, right? You have to figure out, first of all, what kind of sound you're going after because when you're getting into the higher end realms of hi-fi, especially the higher end realms, um, you're going to hear a lot of different presentations. Uh, each brand of gear I have found has sort of a house sound. And while it's not vastly different from each other, the sound, we're still hearing the music, we're still able to enjoy it. Uh, there are systems that portray the sound as leaner and more detail oriented. There are systems that present the sound as rich and warm and a little bit bloated at times. There are systems who are more neutral that provides an even-ended top to bottom. And there are systems with that mid-range bloom and weight. Uh, and I love the systems with a really good mid-range, but I also like the details and I like to have that body to the music. So first, what is your goal? Um, pick a sound you're looking for. Are you a hyper detail person or are you a sit in your chair and relax, kind of let the vibe take you over kind of person. So figure out what your goal is first and foremost, because that's gonna help you decide what brands to audition, what to look for, etc. Also, you're gonna wanna figure out what you want in the system. Are you strictly building a digital streaming system? If so, it can be much easier and much more cost effective. Do you wanna go all out and have an analog or record player in your system to play vinyl? That's gonna bring up the cost a bit. You can have a fully featured system with streamer, DAC, turntable, phono stage, amplifier, preamplifier, or you can go simple and have one box that does it all, though there are compromises to that. So first and foremost, figure out what your goal is. All right, number two on the list, figure out what kind of system you want. Now this is different from number one, and what I mean by this is there's different ways to enjoy music. Do you want something for casual use, to play music around the house as you're working, studying, cleaning, whatever? Do you want a system uh, for parties when you have gatherings at your house just to be big and boomy? Or do you want a serious system that you will sit in a sweet spot for and be immersed in the music? Uh, the uh, third is the one I'll be talking about today because if you just want a casual use system, almost any system can do that. You don't have to spend a ton of money for it. If you want a party system, go buy a three, four, five hundred dollar big hulking Bluetooth speaker and you can jam to your heart's content. But if you want a serious listening system, there's a lot more to it. So if you want one or two, uh, casual or party, you can turn off the video now because every other step along the way, I'm gonna be talking about building a serious listening system where you have to consider the space you're putting the system in, your listening position, where the speakers can go. For serious music listening, you're, you're gonna wanna set up everything just right. Like for example, in my system here, I have my speakers around seven, eight feet apart. I think they're eight feet apart at this point. And I sit around seven feet from them in the room. They're towed in slightly to me where they uh, meet behind the ear where the tweeter or the sound will point directly behind my ears. Now, some speakers will sound better when they're pointed at the ears, and there are a few speakers that will sound better when they cross in front of your face. So you're gonna wanna experiment with positioning when you set up a system, but that's what setting up a critical listening music system is like. You have to counter in every little thing. So number three, the room, the space where you're going to put this system. Figure that out ahead of time. Have a space ready for when you put this thing together. Um, now, there are ways you can do this. Some people have dedicated rooms. Some people use a spare bedroom. Some people use uh, a family room. 
You may not have a dedicated room. You might just have to put it in uh, with your TV in the living room and you might have limited setup, but that's okay. Now the room is the number one most important thing when building an audio system for critical listening, for immersive listening, I should say. I'm gonna change that to immersive because when you have a hi-fi system set up properly, it immerses you in the music and the room plays a very important role in this. Now, I have a 13 by 18 room here. I'm lucky enough to be able to have a dedicated space for listening to music. Uh, and making these videos. Also, look at the size of your room um, because when you're choosing a set of speakers or even the power for those speakers, the smaller the room, uh, you're gonna want smaller speakers. Always pick speakers that are relevant to the size of your room. If you have a big, big wide open space, you're gonna need some bigger speakers and possibly subwoofers to fill that space with music. If you have a small little room, I used to have a room that was 10 by 12. I think it was 10 by 12. Uh, it might have been 12 by 12. It was some, It was very small. And uh, there were times when I put big speakers in that room because I fell in love with the looks of them and it was the absolute wrong choice. If you put a too large of a speaker in a small room, you're gonna have all kinds of booming bass issues that are gonna be almost impossible to control. DSP and room treatments will help with this, of course but always pick the speaker size relevant to the size of your room. You'd be surprised, you'd be amazed at what a little teeny speaker can do in a very little room. Uh, in a medium room such as this, I consider this a medium room 13 by 18, I can get away with small speakers or single driver speakers that are not too hulking uh, or even larger tower speakers with one or two drivers. Um, but if I try to put in huge speakers in here, like say for example, if I tried to put in Sonus Faber Stradivaris, it would just be too much for the room. The room would be overloaded and uh, it wouldn't be a good experience and it would be a money waster. So always pick the speakers to that room because as we say, the room is really the most important. When you listen to your system, you're hearing the room, the reflections, uh, what's going on in the room and you kind of have to tune everything to get it just right to your taste. So the room is very important. Before you go buy that system, make sure you have a space, you know where you're gonna put it. All right, number four, and this one's gonna hurt a little bit. Figure out your budget. Now, you wanna figure out if you wanna go something more mid-fi, and that's a thing, there's nothing wrong with mid-fi. Uh, I have a mid-fi system in another room. And what I call mid-fi is, you know, those pieces that maybe, and we should never associate quality to price, but there is something that goes along with that. Uh, the lower you spend, the lower the refinement usually, the more noise in the system or the pieces will generate more noise, um, and the less build quality and quality of parts inside. As we go up the price ladder, we get more refinement to the sound, which means less of that hash, less of that noise, less of that edge, that glaring edge. Uh, we get more refinement and smoothness and immersiveness. We also get better parts quality, better build quality, and usually nicer designs. But there's nothing wrong with spending less because you can still enjoy music with a mid-fi system. I would say a mid-fi system today in 2023, end of 2023, it could cost you between five and $7,000. Now some of you are like five and $7,000 and that's mid-fi? Very good mid-fi, I'll say. I've heard some beautiful systems in here. The Bucard, I think they're P300s, uh, and I forgot what integrated amp I was running with them at the time, but that was a very satisfying system. No, it didn't have the detail and immersiveness of the higher end pieces, but it was still very musical and lovely. So there's mid-fi bracket, and then there's the high-fi bracket, right? Which is where you get more of that refinement and uh, parts quality and design, but those are gonna cost you more. I would say a proper, really nice high-end hi-fi system today should not really cost you more um, than 25 grand. You can spend a lot more and get a little bit more in return possibly or a little bit less, but 25, 30K, which is a fortune, you used to be able to buy a new car with that, but not anymore. Um, but you can buy a darn nice hi-fi higher end system. Of course, you can go to the moon, you can spend a million, two million, 500,000, whatever you have in your wallet, you can spend. 
but you don't have to spend that much if you're just seeking an immersive, beautiful sound quality from a system. So mid-fi, decide if you're a mid-fi or hi-fi kind of person. Mid-fi, expect to spend between five and $7,000. Hi-fi, you know, I can say 15,000, 20, 25, 30,000. The system I have behind me retails for, I think, around 35,000 with everything that is in it. I used to have a system that retailed for 75K. I like this one quite a bit better. It's more refined, it's more immersive, it's more enveloping. I just like the vibe of it uh, quite a bit more. So more money doesn't always mean better performance. Number five, do your research. Uh, go online, go into the forum, see what other people are talking about. Um, ask dealers, talk to your local dealer. They can give you some fantastic advice. Tell them your budget, the sound you're looking for, what you want to get back out of your investment. And there are dealers and people on audio forums that are willing to help with their opinion. But remember, take forums and online use as opinion only. Never go with what anyone else says, even me. Always listen with your own ears um, and trust your own ears above anyone else. For example, if you hear a piece and you think it sounds perfect to your ears, but you see someone online trashing that piece, and then you're, you don't go thinking, oh, I better not get it because this guy doesn't like it. We all like different things. We all hear a little bit differently, and we all have different tastes. So if you find a piece you love, don't worry about what someone else is saying about it. All that matters is what you think. But always do your research. Uh, research the brands. Research the product you're looking for. Check reviews from real people, not just online YouTubers, and see what they think. Because, you know, audio is very, very subjective. We all like different things. And that's why when I review a piece, I try my best to tell you the sound I'm getting from it and I tend to review pieces I love, so most of the things I review are going to fall in line with my taste, which I've explained already, but, but always do your research, that is key. When I was building my previous system to this one, I was kind of piecemealing it all and just trying different things and putting it in, and some things didn't have synergy and some things did, and I ended up with this Frankenstein of a system of all different manufacturers, and it sounded beautiful. It was up until that time, the finest I heard for my taste in my rooms. When I received the Daniel Hertz equipment a few months ago, there's just been no going back for me. This system provides a sound that I love. It's like analog on steroids, zero digital hash or noise or crunchiness. Everything just sounds so refined, smooth, huge scale. The dynamics are beautiful while being a little bit warm, um, everything is just beautiful. So I have not heard anything else come in since the Daniel Hertz that even compares to it. Um, I've stopped wanting for other systems. And that's how you know when you're on the right track, when you build your system and you're just completely happy with it and thoughts of other products just melt away from your brain. That's what's happened to me over the past few months. So research is key. Number six, let's talk about synergy. Uh, synergy really is important. Not all pieces go together. So say you buy a preamp from brand A and an amplifier from brand B. You might hook them up and they might not sound very well together. Back in the day, I think this was around 2002, I had bought a Pass Labs. It was one of their first preamps. Um, was it the X? Oh, I don't remember what it was called. Um, it had an interesting name and it was pretty industrial looking. And I hooked it up to an amp I had at the time. I think it was a monoblock set from Sonic Frontiers. Some of you may remember Sonic Frontiers. They made pretty cool tube gear. And it just sounded awful. It was flat. I thought something was wrong with it. Um, it just didn't have the synergy. It sounded gray and, and no life to it. And I thought to myself, this is what I paid all this money for? And I preferred the sound from my cheapo system because it had life and body to it and the synergy wasn't working. So synergy is important. Uh, I would say to never buy two pieces blindly, uh, you know, two different brands to piece them together, a preamp and amp. When I buy a preamp or amp or, or evaluate a preamp and amp, I always wanna hear them within the same brand because each brand has a different house sound. Very 
very slight sometimes, but some brands are very different from each other. And one brand will not sound like the other. So when you're mixing them two together, it's kind of a mismatch. So look for synergy. Uh, my tip is if you're going to buy separates, buy them from the same brand because they're all made to go together, right? And then there are speakers known to go with certain brands very well. That goes back to the research aspect of it. But uh, there have been times when even a speaker cable I bought off Amazon, I, I, it was like a hundred bucks and it claimed to be this audiophile speaker cable. I plugged it in, I swapped out the cables I had and the sound just went flat and hard, all from a speaker cable and I couldn't believe that that happened. I wrote the manufacturer, told of my experience and they refunded me. But um, synergy is really, really important. Uh, everything I have in my system today synergizes as good as it can synergize. And that's the goal you want to go for, for complete system happiness, for that hi-fi heaven. You want everything. You're spending a lot of money, so you want everything to go together really well. So again, talk to your dealers. Check out what people are saying. Do your research. But most importantly, find pieces that really work well together. Number seven, decide if you want to be an all-in-one box person or a separate person. And I mean integrated versus separates. Back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, even early 2000s, um, I always felt separates provided a bit of a better uh, musical presentation. They were usually cleaner, more refined yet again, quieter, but with separates comes much more expense you're gonna have more cables to buy. And you do want decent cables when you're paying this kind of money for gear. Don't think for a second that those cheapo RCA cables that you can get for five bucks are going to sound nearly as good as something that will cost you a hundred or two hundred dollars. I'm not talking about spending ten thousand dollars on cables like some people do. In my reference system, I have a set of cables I think total that retail for around twelve or thirteen hundred dollars, and that is in a system of uh, around thirty, thirty-five thousand retail cost. So I didn't go crazy with the cables, and yet I'm getting the sound I love, and I wouldn't change them out at this point. Anytime you go separates, you're going to have much more expense. And I've heard a lot of separates over the last few years, and I will happily say that today, at the end of 2023. I feel integrated amps are just as good as most separates. I have a 30K set of separates here and I much prefer this integrated amp I have right here, which I think now retails for 13 grand. But to me, it blows those separates out of the water that costs more than double. And I mean blows them out of the water. So don't always think separates are going to be superior. Today's integrated amps are remarkable. They're quiet, there's, they're noise free, and they're musical as all get out while providing all those same details and low noise of the prior uh, separates from back in the day, even today. So decide if you want to be an integrated person. You can get an integrated amp that has everything like the Yamaha RN1000 and RN2000, and all you got to do is plug in some speakers. You're going to lose a little bit of magic with something like that because of the internal DAC is not up to snuff. So just figure out integrated or separates. Today, I am a huge integrated fan. I think that is the only way I will ever be from now on. Um, my favorite systems over the past few years, evaluating them, reviewing them, it's all been integrated amps. And while separates are really nice and beautiful, don't believe today that they're vastly superior to integrated amps of today. I believe that today's integrated amps are at least equal to most separates. Um, they are that good. So even a brand um, might have an integrated and a pair of separates. I've heard one big brands integrated and their separates and I still preferred the integrated. Um, and also there's pros that come with that. Less space needed, usually less heat, less cost less cable. So there's pros to going integrated and today's integrateds are absolutely fantastic. So um, for me, it's integrated, but for you, you might have that appeal to separates because it just looks more majestic, right? But it's not always going to sound more majestic. 
So once you make all those choices, get your room ready, do your research on those brands that speak to your heart. And that's another thing I recommend. Go with what speaks to your heart. What are you drawn to? Check out those brands first. The next step, number eight, you want to now finally audition the pieces. You want to find the pieces you're looking for and you want to hear them before you make the commitment to buy them. How do you do that? Well, if you have a local dealer or even if you have to drive 100 miles to get to a dealer, it's so worth it. Check it out. Audition those pieces in their showroom, in their listening room. If you have a relationship with your dealer, they might let you take home gear to try it for 24 hours or 48 hours or so. That's really cool. I used to do that in Arizona at Arizona Hi-Fi. Uh, Glenn there used to let me borrow products because he knew I'd buy them half the time because I'd love them. And uh, that's another thing I'll talk about in another video. But always try to audition the piece. If you don't have a dealer that you can get to or there's no dealer within so many miles of you that carries what you want, I would suggest buying them online from a dealer who offers a 60-day return policy. There are companies out there like Crutchfield, Music Direct, um, and, and others that offer a 60-day try-it-in-your-home policy. If you don't like it, you can send it back for a full refund and they don't charge your restocking fees. Now, this is an incredible service and it's something that I've taken advantage of in the past where I'll buy a piece. If it doesn't thrill me after a week or so, I don't usually wait the 60 days. I wait a week or two. And if I know it's something I'm not happy with, I send it back and I don't feel bad doing so because that is the policy these companies have created. Now, never abuse this policy. I'm not a fan of when people abuse these return policies. You can't try 10 different things and return all 10 and then you're giving this company used products to sell at a discount. Um, but you know, do if you do your research and you talk to people, talk to dealers, uh, figure out your space, you already know by now what it is, you have an idea what it is you wanna hear and what you like. So when you try these pieces, it should only take you one or two tries to find something that really speaks to your heart. And that is the, the way to really find a piece for the long term, one that speaks to your heart instead of your eyes and brain with the glitz and the flash and the dollar sign. So always try to audition the gear in your own space because even when you go to a dealer and you say you're auditioning a set of speakers, a dealer, and they sound, ooh, this is my perfect sound I've been looking for, I'll take them. You get them home, you plug them in and they sound completely different. That's because you're in a different room. You have a different amp powering them maybe. Maybe you have a different DAC. Maybe you have a different turntable. Maybe you have different cables. Yes, cables make a difference. Maybe you have uh, um, a different um, whatever, right? It's gonna sound different in your room. So the best way to audition is to always hear the piece in your space, if at all possible. And the only reason I can think of where that wouldn't be possible is if you're looking at something uber exotic um, you know, where they don't really have big dealers. Um, in that case, you're dealing with a manufacturer. And there are some manufacturers that offer a 30 or 60 day trial. You'll just have to check with them. I know the Fleetwood DeVille's offered this, uh, the Daniel Hertz systems offer this, other systems that sell direct online offer this. So that is the best way to know um, what you're going to get and without risk. So always audition. Moving on, we have two more. And number nine is probably the most important thing. Um, we talked about finding your space, finding the room you're gonna put the system in, but we didn't talk about the other aspect of it. Let's say, for example, you're gonna use a spare bedroom and you already have a rack or something, a cabinet to set your audio gear on and you have your chair, but the room might be hardwood floors have nothing on the walls, um, or maybe you have um, other things in the room uh, that will reflect the sound. And when this happens, you might put your system in and it might sound hard and grating, and you might hear ringing, you might have a lack of bass. That's because everything in the room is reflecting the sound waves all around, and it's creating a mess of the translation of the recording. Uh, that's the best way to put it. need to treat the room. There's two ways to treat the room. You can call a pro and have them 
bring out big money room treatments that they'll put on your wall and in the corners of your room up in the ceiling. It'll cost you uh, some thousands of dollars or you can do it uh, in a less expensive way and buy some room treatment gear for yourself. They sell room treatments on Amazon, on some audio shops. Um, but the way I prefer to treat the room is naturally. What I do if I have a room, this room here, it was empty hardwood floors with these big old windows, right? So the way I combated that was I put a huge floor rug in here that almost takes up the whole room. I found the biggest one I could find for this space on Amazon. I bought it, it came, instantly helped. When I listen, I roll my blinds down, which are thick, and I can roll them all the way to the floor. The windows get covered and there's no reflection there at all. I put little sound treatment panels that I bought from Amazon throughout the room. And I also like to treat it naturally with furniture, a couch, a soft couch or a soft recliner, pillows, blankets. Sometimes uh, I'll throw a pillow in each corner, right? Um, so there's natural ways you can treat the room without spending a fortune. I did that here. I naturally treated the room. I think I spent a total of $200 uh, on these room treatment squares, which I'm not even sure did much of anything, um, but this room sounds beautiful. It's the best sounding room I've had in life. And you would think the opposite with these big windows, but when they're closed, the blinds are down, they're pretty thick, um, it causes zero issue. Even if I listen to them with all the windows exposed, the sound gets a little uh, lighter, a little more trouble centric, um, and that's about it. It, it. It's not offensive or causing me issues, but it definitely sounds better with the carpet or the rug and the blinds down and the pillows and the blankets and the furniture. Um, that's the way to naturally treat a room. You can also over dampen a room, right? If you have nothing in the room, you're gonna get reflections. If you have too much in the room, it could be over dampened. And one, one night, Debbie and I did an experiment in here. We covered all the windows corner to corner with thick blankets, right? And everything that was reflective was covered. And we covered up uh, other things that were in here, like the metallic heater. We weren't using it, of course. And the sound became so dead in here. When I turned on the music, it was just uninspiring. Everything was dead. Even when we talked, it was so quiet. It was like we were in a soundproof booth or something. And uh, it just was weird not hearing any kind of reverberation at all. Um, so you can go too far and the music will sound dead. If you have no treatment, the music might sound splashy or out of control. When the music sounds just right and you have that imaging with the voice coming right at you, uh, and the music enveloping you from all sides, that's when you know you got it right. So room treatment, whether you do it naturally, uh, whether you buy products to do it, or hire a pro to do it, there's plenty of pros out there who will do it, um, it is very important to do this for your room for optimal sound. Now, what is number 10? Number 10 is you've done all the research, you've done all the soul searching, you found products that spoke to your heart and soul. You went to the dealers to audition. You online researched in forums and asked other people their experiences about the gear. You figured out what goes well together. You found a manufacturer you love and everything seems to be copacetic. Everything seems to be working. You have your room treated and you have the system powered on. You're sitting back and you're like, holy smokes, this sounds amazing. I am in hi-fi heaven. My advice to you now is stick with it. There's a thing in this hobby. It's the honeymoon period, the honeymoon phase where we get something new. It sounds so good because we never heard anything like it before and we just love it. But then after a few months, maybe even some for some a few weeks, uh, it starts to you start to get that itch because you see shiny new products online that you think might be better than what you have. My advice to you is block that out because over 35 years of doing this, when I've got into that cycle of, ooh, I need this, I need this, it's gonna be better than what I have, it might lead to a short-term honeymoon phase, but it always, it always ends up the same way. Um, no long-term satisfaction. And the goal here should be long-term, many, many years of living with a system and enjoying it, uh, just like we used to do back in the 70s, 80s, right? People would buy a system and it would be their system for years. Now, many do this today, 
but some people, and it's an addiction of sorts, go through and cycle gear endlessly. I used to do that all the time, especially in the late 90s and early 2000s. And I've done it here in this room, but my motivation here is different. I'm running a YouTube channel about audio and I wanna share new and exciting things with you. So if I can get something without a loss, I'll get it in here and talk about it and show you guys. And um, you know, I think I've had three systems in here in three years. Um, that were solidified systems. So I had really three major systems in here over the last three years. Uh, started out really what I consider a serious system was my Klipsch La Scala system. I love the sound of that. It was big and bold, but it was really lacking in bass at the end of the day. I thought I could go without that extra bass and most subs aren't fast enough to keep up with horn speakers. And they were like the size of refrigerators, just too big for the room and too heavy. I then moved on to the Fleetwood DeVilles. They stayed in here for over a year. And once I heard the Daniel Hertz, uh, Ava and Amber system, I was completely sold on that whole system, the whole philosophy of it. Uh, everything matched, everything sounds like analog on steroids. It's just such a beautiful thing. So I've done those systems here and little ones along the way, the Klipsch Heresy 4s I had here for a couple of years, three years. Um, those were speakers that hung around for the long term and I'd put them in every now and again. Um, but yeah, I've had many other pieces of gear in here, but that was mostly due to this channel. Uh, I will say now that I have zero plans, zero um, want to do anything different with the system. Uh, I have it as it is right now and it's, it's, I'm happy with it. I'm enjoying it. And every night when I turn it on, I feel blessed and lucky to be able to experience um, this system in my home because I am not a wealthy or rich guy by any stretch of the imagination. I am rich, but I'm rich in other things in peace, serenity, happiness, and love. That to me is what makes a person rich, right? When you're at peace and love life and are completely happy with all aspects of life. So the key here is when you find a system you love and you like it, even if it's for the first week, the first few months, the first year, stick with it. Because the longer you have a system and the longer you enjoy it, the more you'll bond with it and the more you won't want to part with it. I'm going through that with the Daniel Hertz system here. Nothing I've heard comes close. There's nothing out there that I have desire for, a want or need, nothing. And that's probably the second time in life that's happened. The first time I had a system I absolutely adored long-term, two, three years and I had to sell it uh, for financial reasons. So the only way that this system will leave this room, and a lot of you are like, yeah, right. Uh, true story here. The only way the system will leave the room is if I need it for financial reasons. Uh, and then it would be me downgrading drastically. Um, but I hope to have this system here for many years to come. Uh, and that's the goal for all of us, right? To get off of that uh, endless carousel of gear swaps. And I hopefully, with these 10 tips I gave you, it might help those of you that are new to this hobby or those of you just looking to upgrade uh, or those of you old timers who know a lot more than me. And for those of you, leave a comment below and give your tip uh, for building a hi-fi system and, and for long-term happiness. Uh, so that's what we're looking for. I look forward to your comments. And uh, that's about it. That'll wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will have my review very soon of the Ever Solo DMP A8. That's my next video. So stay tuned. I'll see you in that one.